Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I wanted to make a video basically chatting with you guys and talking about a very important topic, especially in the React community, which is what are best practices? And before we actually get into the video, I want to say that best practices actually depends on every, like each person. Each person can weigh in the benefits and uh, the, like the pros and cons of doing something. And it usually like depends upon the developer. However, there's obviously some stuff that you guys should know so that you make the decision on your own. And also there's some stuff that if you're working on a, on a larger company, you will have to do because it is best practice. It is easier it makes the code read uh, it, like increases readability it also makes the, co the code run faster in some cases so that's just better so in this video I'm going to talk about some of the different best practice things that I can like imagine that I usually do and I want to just present it to you guys so before we get into the video if you guys could leave a like I would really appreciate it and let's start so you can see right here uh, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is about is basically uh, separating components from UI and logic. This is extremely important in my opinion because it allows your code, especially your code base to be a lot more readable, also a lot more maintainable. So you can see right here, I have a very, very simple application. I just rendered up here my app.js, my app component, and I created a simple, a simple counter. You can see that if I, if I click on this button right here called increment, uh, a simple state called counter val, uh, just increases because we have a function here called increment which just sets the counter vol equal to counter vol plus one it's a very simple counter application we're rendering here the value for the counter and we have here the button however what is wrong with this well it's, it's not that it's wrong but we can see clearly that if we have a lot of logic in a component and we have a lot of UI in a component, then the component will simply be large. It would be huge because we'll have a, a whole separate part, which is all devoted to logic and a whole separate part, which is all devoted to UI and a, the, the JSX of the, of the component. So what I like to do is I like to separate into a presentational component and a logical component. So what do I mean by separating into two components? Well, let's actually transform this application into a, 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 like a type of application that I would actually build if I were actually following this best practice. Well, first of all, I wouldn't be able to define my states in this component because the, this component would be purely for UI. It would be the presentational component. So the, the first thing we need to do is I'll just comment this out for now but let's just comment this out and we are not going to write any logic inside of here we don't even need to import the use state hook here because we're not creating our states here but this over here we should let it for now so it's our simple uh, ui it's like all the visual part of the component and what we need to do is we need to create a different file usually what i like to do is like divide my project into folders so for example i have a components folder a pages folder and for each kind of like different component I want to have, I create another folder and instead of there, I put the two files, the presentational part of the component and the logical part of the component. In this case, I'll just create the file here. For example, the logical component would be called counter.js. Just a simple file that is going to contain all the logical stuff that should be used in the app.js. And what do I actually write here? Well, we're gonna basically create a custom hook. And how we're going to do this? Well, we can come up here first of all and import uh, the use state hook because we're going to use that in this component. And we're going to import that from React. Then we have to, oh, I accidentally pressed enter. Then we have to create the actual function. So let's create counter. By the way, don't forget to call your functions or your components, uh, make them have capital letters because. It, like it, it always gives problems if you don't so instead of here we can put all the logic that we want and at the end every single piece of information we want to get in our visual component we can just return so we can pass an object containing all the information we want and what kind of information do we want well first of all we want the state so let's define the state up here we can just copy and paste because we already defined it before so we can just create the state inside of this component and what else do we want well we want a function that is going to increment the the counter whenever we click on a button so we can just come here and again copy and paste so if you like you can see where this is going right we define every part of lot like every single logical thing we have in our component in a different component 
And now we have both of this. And you might be wondering, well, how do I access this into in the visual component? How do I actually do this? Because I'm see, like you can see right here, I'm I'm using increment function and I'm also using the state over here. Well, we have to return everything that we want to see in the other component, including the counter vol. So that's the first thing we want to return. And also we want to return the function because we want to access this function in the visual component. And at the bottom, we can't forget to export default counter. So we're just exporting this logical component. And if we want to access it, we can just come here. And at the top, we can say import a counter from and we put the path of our component. So this case is count dot slash counter. And now over here, we can destructure this hook, we can destructure this component by saying const. Uh, and then we can just say uh, the name, the name of the variables we want to use like increment, and counter vol, and then set it equal to counter. This is how you basically do it. Now we have two values, as you can see, it, it even auto completes because it knows that we have these two inf pieces of information in our counter. By the way, this is how you create a custom hook in React. So we can access these two pieces of information that exists in this component. And now we can use both of them over here and it will work perfectly. I'll just save this so you can see. And we refreshed our application and now it continues working just as before. However, there's this, the, the only difference is that now everything that is logical exists in a different and separate component, meaning our code is a lot more maintainable and readable if we have like a large project. Okay, guys, so now we go into the second uh, tip that I would give you guys to improve your best practices. And this is actually something I was reading, like, I, I was reading I just thought of adding this in this video because I was reading some tweets. And I, I, I read a tweet by Ben Edward, which is another YouTuber. And he was talking about basically how he he doesn't understand the hate with inline lambdas, which if you don't know what it means is basically instead of for example, saying increment, uh, like put it passing a function over here, we actually do like write the function anonymously inside of the on click. And you've seen me do this so many times. For example, if I came here and passed the set counter vol uh, here as well, so set counter vol, and instead of just incrementing by using the increment function, we actually grab the set counter vol. And we just do, did something like an, an anonymous function, which is a lambda function. And we did it like this. And I said set counter vol equal to counter vol plus one, we could have put in all the logic that exists in the increment function over here, inside of this on click uh, property. However, what is the problem with this? Well, you've seen me done do this a bunch of times. And I actually do this a lot. I, I don't like I, I don't see that much of a problem with it. However, there are some stuff that you should be aware of. For example, you shouldn't be doing this in every single situation. Why wouldn't we do this? Why wouldn't we want to do this? Well, you can see that this function over here only exists inside of the uh, JSX inside of the return statement. So inside of the UI part of the application. So what does that mean? Well, remember that every time the page renders, this over here will be like will run again meaning that this function at every re render will be recreated when instead of that, we could just create the function once outside of here. And even if we change a value for a state, the function wouldn't be recreated, it would just already exist. And we could access it, we didn't we wouldn't have to recreate this function every single time. When over here, you can clearly see that it would be recreated at each re render. Okay, guys, so the next thing I want to talk about is well, how would I structure my application? Well, so as you can see, this is a very simple, just a very simple react application here, I just made it up to give an example to you guys. But we're going to basically create the project st structure that I would use if I were making a large scale react application. Well, the first thing I wouldn't do is I wouldn't uh, basically uh, use this counter, uh, like just create random files in the middle of the SRC, I would divide everything into folders. And also the app.css, I usually wouldn't want to actually, I wouldn't even use the app.css probably, because I would just style everything in each component in each page. So basically, in my app.js, usually I would have everything related to react router DOM. So I would define all of my routes. And that would be literally it. So I could leave it inside of my SRC. But then I would have a few folders, one of them could be routes, which uh, in some cases, I also call it pages, 
it will basically be a folder containing all the different pages we want to have in our application like if I had a home page um, like I don't know an about us page a contact page whatever different pages I want to have in the application I would put them inside of here and for each page I would create a separate folder for example if we had the home page I would create a folder called home and if I had the let me think the login page I would create a folder called login so we divide them like this and then for each of these folders I would have all the different components that I would want to have that would be related to the home page for example I would have home.js which would be the page and I would have something like home logic .js. This is personal preference, but this is what I mean by separating. Uh, this is what I was talking about, about separating the logic from the UI. Home would be the logic, the, the, the UI component, and home logic would be the logic that would be used in the home component. And we can't forget about styling. So I do it this way, but it's totally up to you. People like, people like to create folders for styles, or people even like to just put the styles inside of the components, which I totally hate in my opinion. But I like to create here the home.css and just have all three of them over here, which is perfect, right? And I would do this for each of the pages, each of the routes. So if routes would be the first folder I would create. The second one would be components. And components could be whatever you want specifically. It could be things that you want to reuse, for example. And what do I mean by reuse? Well, a routes, it's only pages. But just imagine that you want to have a nav bar, right? A nav bar isn't a page. It is just something that you want to have in every single page, so you want to reuse it, and you just want to keep them there. So where do I put the, where where would I put a nav bar? Well, I would put it inside of the components. So I would do exactly the same thing I did with pages. Inside of here, I would create a nav bar, and for example, if I wanted to have a footer, which is like the the thing that appears at the bottom of a of a website, I would create another folder called footer, and you can see that now in components, I would have wait did I <laughs> did I accidentally create the the footer inside of navbar yeah I think so but I'll create footer over here and okay it's not showing yeah I accidentally created footer <laughs> the, every single folder inside of navbar I'm gonna delete those and I just want to show you guys what I would do I would come here to components create another folder for example footer and I would have different folders for each component as I mentioned and I would follow the same route as I did before creating the CSS and maybe not the logic because I don't think like small components like footer and navbar navbar maybe yeah navbar would probably but footer I don't think there would be any logic around it and finally what is another thing I would do and I don't know if a lot of people do this I would recommend I would create different folders for all the different small things you want to have in your application for example I like to have validations I like to have uh, basically validations for every single input I have if I for example if I have a login page I want to validate if the information they put in the login page is correct information if the information they put in the email for example the email input is that an actual email so I would create a, a folder called validations something like this then I, I would put here whatever I want if you guys want to want me to make a video on validations I could definitely make one but I use a library called yup which is a very famous library for validations and this is where I would usually put my validation and more importantly I would also have a helper folder so something like helper and inside of here I would just put every single logical file that could be used in several different components what do I mean by that well I actually put all my context information so everything related to context API inside of this helper folder and it is really nice because I can just define everything here I could use the context on every single component so I treat that as a, as a helper and what else can we put here? We can put functions that are used several times in the application. For example, imagine in our application, we want to basically have a function which uh, turns, uh, I don't know, turns uh, an email to lowercase. I know that's super dumb, but just a function that does that. Or a function that sorts a list, for example. You know what I mean by, by that, right? So it's just a function that you give a, an array and it will sort it. Well, if I want to use that several times in the application, I would create a, here a file, for example, sorting.js. And inside of here, I would just write a function. So const, something like const. Sort. I won't write a sorting algorithm here for you guys, but you get, you get what I mean, right? And at the bottom, I would just export, uh, either export sorting like this and, this, and just access this, fo this function uh, anywhere I want in the application. So this is the basic idea of the helpers folder. And honestly, I believe that would basically be it. I don't 
believe in just creating a hundred different folders in your application. I know I created four of them. I would probably create more, but like for example, I would have a folder also for errors. So I can make something like this, errors. But yeah, that's basically it. You can you can play around with this. Best practices and project structure depends on you. But but one thing that is always standard is to have the routes or pages the components and have somewhere to put your styles. So that's the basic thing that you should know. And finally, guys, I want to talk about some like two different technologies that I believe you should use in every react application. And one of them is extremely like standard, it's it's used in every large scale project, it is ESLint, it just allows you to automatically fix like certain standards in your application. For example, if you want to create an application, you want to keep it consistent. Uh, throughout the application, right? So for example, what do I mean by small changes? If you want to always use semicolons at the end of like a, a statement, then you sh like you could put that in ESLint and it would tell you whenever you run the application if it is failing this condition. And if it is, you can just fix it automatically and ESLint will fix it for you. Also, for example, using double quotes and single quotes. You want to keep a standard, right? You want to keep it consistent. If you use double quotes in one one part of the application and you use single quotes on another part, that's not as organized as it could, as it could be. So most companies use ESLint and it will fix everything automatically. And it's great. It's hard to configure those, so I'd recommend watching a video. I can make a video on ESLint if you guys want, but it's really awesome. And another thing is more like personal. I love South components. You know, if you guys see in my channel, I have several videos on it. I think I have like four and I have a full crash course on stout components. It's just a lot. It's, it's perfect. It's literally perfect. It's a way to create components that are automatically styled and it's great. This is the syntax. As you can see, you put all the CSS styles inside of it and you can just reuse code. You can pass props to your CSS file and it's just perfect as you can see in my opinion right so i really you can see all the companies that use uh, style components i would yeah google uses it github spotify like i would i would definitely think more of them use it but i would recommend using it and yeah also seeing this i, <laughs> I forgot but uh, use es6 instead of uh, normal javascript just use es6 write functions with uh, using consts and arrow functions it's just a lot more standard nowadays so yeah that's basically it for all the different small tips that i could come up in this uh, for this video uh, these are actually all the standard and for best practices i actually follow there are also, there are like some more general stuff like oh you should uh, try to make your components as small as possible in the in the sense that you want to make your component do just one thing and just create several components to do a bunch of stuff and put all of them together but i, I didn't want to comp over complicate stuff and i usually don't even do like i don't i don't separate as much as i possibly could because i just write i i, I like to balance between writing maintainable code and following best practices and I believe everyone should do that. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment down below what you want to see next. A subscriber recommended this video so I was really happy that they recommended me and I made the video so if you recommend me a video, I should probably make one. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe because I'm posting every single day and I see you guys next time.